So yeah, let me briefly introduce ourselves. Um, Atlantis Bioscience is a Singapore registered company established in 2016. We are a distributor for life science products and services. We provide solutions for biomedical and healthcare research. They're, these are the brands that we represent. We are focusing on distributions of cellular and molecular products, ranging from our star products, cell culture media, animal serum, FPS, imaging dyes, Western blottings and flow cytometry reagents. We also provide support for oncologies and drug development and delivery systems, including hydrogel cultured labwares, human derived EZM, 3D cultures, primary li human liver cells, nanoparticles, MSC derived exosomes, HSA, and preclinical oncology services. Apart from interesting in promoting general reagents, our aim is to provide total solution from bench to bed in cells and gene therapy. We also provide specialized media for NK, T cells, and MSCs, human platelet cells, GMP growth factors, and also RUO grade growth factors. Lastly, we expand our interest in alternative protein and cultured meat, providing cell processing, cell factories, microcarriers, plant-based growth factors. We also provide DNA, reading, writing, and editing services. And as we are moving into a digitalization world, we are the authorized agent for electronic lab notebooks as well. Today, we are presenting webinar on a topic of total protein normalization, the new normal in quantitative Western blood, presented by Dr. Tan Kai Ling from Astro Biosystems. Astro Biosystem is the world leader in Western blood reagents and imaging systems. In 2018, they developed a revolutionary total protein staining workflow as a new technology to quantify the Western blood, making total protein normalization easier than ever. Dr. Kai Ling has worked for Astro Biosystem for two years as a regional field application scientist in Asia and Oceania. Just a little housekeeping again before we get started. This webinar will be recorded for our internal use and marketing purposes. If you have any question during the presentation, please type them into the comment box down below and I'll bring them up during the Q&A sessions. Also, if you have any further question or inquiry, please do not hesitate to contact us. And this is the contact information. Now, without further ado, please welcome our speaker, Dr. Tan Kai Ling to the stage. Thank you everyone for coming uh, to this webinar. Today, we will talk about total protein normalization in quantitative resin blood, the principles, reagent selection, and also data analysis. And I am Kai Ling, the Regional Fluid Application Scientist of Azul Biosystems. Before we start, let me introduce Azul Biosystems to you. We're a team of highly experienced scientists and entrepreneur and engineer that are dedicated to accelerating your science. We produce products that combine smart and simple workflow with high performance and affordability. So you can have the confidence in your data to move quick forward quickly and the flexible capabilities to go whenever the data takes you. Our company founded in 2013 the office and the manufacturing factory is in Dublin, California, very near the Silicon Valley. That is where we design, develop, and manufacture all our products. So here's a timeline of uh, development of our company. The company founded in 2013. All the core members are coming from Alpha Inotech. If you've been familiar with Western Blood Imaging, then you'll be quite familiar with this brand. It's basically an quite an early uh, image, Western blot imaging system at early days and also until today. So today, since our topic will be mainly focused on reagents, then I will let you know that uh, we Azuba systems are basically a Western blot solution provider. We have gel systems, reagents and consumables to, for you to perform the Western blot and also imaging system to capture the picture of the Western blot as well. In terms of gel system, we call we have a Zoo Aqua Quad uh, Mini Cell, that's a gel tank, and also two of the star today, Total Stain Q and Azure Red. Both of them are fluorescent protein stain 
in, for the purpose of total protein normalization. With that, we also pair it with low fluorescence PVDM membrane. And also, if you're doing chemiluminescent resistance, we also have ECL uh, substrate called radiant substrate. Right. So we have three agenda for today's presentation. The first is how we transit or why researcher has been transiting from mouse keeping protein to total protein normalization. Second, how to select a suitable total protein stain. And finally, let us look at how to present the data and an application note on that. Right. In the context of quantitative Western blot, for a measurement to be quantitative, there are three main criteria that this measurement must meet. The first thing is the measurement must be generated using a defined process, which is the Western blot uh, process. Second, the process generates a reproducible outcome, i.e. precise, and the measurement reflects a true outcome that representing what you want to look for, which is accurate. In meeting these three criteria, quantitative Western blot process needs to be well-defined and the steps follow as consistently as possible and the data need to be reproducible. And also one final thing, the data must be or should be consistent with the data collected by an, an orthogonal method such as mass spec. So it must be complementary one and another. So here I want to quote uh, uh, some words from uh, James from this paper, an analysis of critical factors for quantitative immunoblotting. In the context of quantitative Western blot, just because we can put numbers on an image does not imply that we should, a quantified biomolecule should relate directly to the true quantity of that molecule if it is to be meaningful. So the ultimate aim is the direct correlation between the signal and also the amount that you want to look for. In the Zuba systems, we always say consistency is the key to quantitative Western blot. Here we also have a checklist for you to adhere or just want to check whether you, is, uh, you have all these concerns that may actually help you in achieving quantitative Western blot. Only that I summarized it into five points. The first point will be process the pro samples in the same way. Second, validate your antibodies. Thirdly, validate signal linearity. This is very important and optimize the dynamic range. These are the smaller points. For example, sample amount falls within the linear range of the signal. And then check your transfer conditions, titrate your primary antibody optimize the image acquisition time, also choose the right substrate for quantitative chemiluminescent Western blot. At the fourth point here, we say in achieving quantitative Western blot, normalize or normalization to total protein stain is what we prefer or what we recommend. And finally, use consistent Western blotting protocol. Our presentation today will be focusing on this the normalization part of it. And I want to justify to you, why is it important that we transit to total protein normalization? Normalization in quantitative Western blot is very crucial because it meant for you to do, to get this reliable quantitation and to able to quantitate the minute differences between group and protein sample. So the definition of normalization would be using a feature that is expected to remain invariant across samples and condition. So you can control for the variations in sample preparation, loading, transfer efficiency, then generate a relative measurement of your target proteins to that invariant feature. How to do that? You do the normalization by dividing the signal intensity of the target of that invariant feature, it either be housekeeping protein or total protein in each of these lane. There are two widely used normalization method in but quantitative Western blot at the moment. The first lead will be housekeeping normalization, and the second one will be total protein normalization. 
Housekeeping normalization is one widely used method that has been used to normalize the signal of your target protein, let's say A, normalized to a housekeeping protein, uh, which is protein B, which assume to have a stable and invariant levels of expression. So let us look deep into housekeeping protein as a normalization control or a loading control. So here's a, just a restating uh, what it means by normalizing normalization in quantitative Western blot. It's just in a better way to say it. Accur accurate quantitative comparison requires band normalization against an internal reference that doesn't change with experimental conditions, but it will change proportionally to the protein amount loaders. So this is what we want. Everything is fixed and constant, but the protein, the signal that you get responds directly to the protein amount that you want to look for. So that's the final goal in achieving quantitative Western blot. Housekeeping protein is, a, like I say, is a fairly commonly used and is very familiar chemistry. And, but the one key thing is housekeeping protein, like I say, is a one single protein band that you're looking for. Therefore, the entire normalization relies on a single indicator of sample loading across the entire membrane. This is very risky because all these, hang on, right, all these housekeeping proteins that we thought to be consistently expressed has been show differential expression between, let's say, sample types or even time point collection or even seasons. So this also, the reason why uh, there's the, the flaws, I'll say the, back, the drawbacks of housekeeping protein also lies in between the multiple steps in between the protein determination once you quantify your protein uh, concentration and the final visualization of the plotted proteins. So basically four factors that can prevent the unequal loading on the blot. The first one is, the error in protein determination might be due to incompatible protein lysis, uh, lysis buffer. Second point is inconsistent protein loading into the lanes, for example, pipetting errors or bubbles in the pipette tips. The third point will be inconsistent protein separation in the gel, for example, inconsistent protein entry into the gel matrix in the resolving gel, or maybe the tank just tilted. And then the final point will be unequal protein transfer efficiency across the entire membrane. So there are four main points here that will contribute to unequal protein loading on the blood itself. Therefore, it's highly variable. And the second point is, as we, are, uh, as we quite uh, known, uh, unknown, the housekeeping proteins, the, their expression do change in response to experiment condition and sample type, which will introduce inaccuracy. And the next point for we'll talk about drawbacks of a housekeeping protein is often these proteins are highly expressed and it's more appropriately if you want to use it together with your highly expressed uh, target proteins. Because if you have, let's say you, your target protein here is a very lowly expressed in order to achieve that consistent or say a good visualization, you will normally need to max out your loading your loading volume or even concentration. And the more often the time, this will saturate the membrane. You will notice your housekeeping protein detection will be very easily saturated. It's very hard to control. Therefore, it introduced narrow linear dynamic range in terms of quantifying the expression of these housekeeping protein in serving to be a normalization control. And yeah, then therefore introduce errors. There's a lot of publications and recent studies have shown how flawed the assumption of how skin protein expressions are constant can be. So it, the, the, earliest, the earliest point I'll say is researchers that addressing this issue can be as early as 1999. And of course we have a lot more uh, publications that uh, detailing the limitations of how skin protein. I highly recommend uh, all of you to read them out. Some of them, they have been generating a lot of data comparing different uh, say tissue types on e disease states and 
cell stage stage and so on and so forth. Just to tell that uh, the housekeeping protein itself may not be housekeeping anymore under uh, following circumstances. With that, a few alternatives have been suggested to solve this problem. For example, picking a different housekeeping protein, but also you need to verify the expression to confirm that it's, a constant, uh, it's an, in a consistent expression. And also you might be able to uh, do more than one housekeeping protein to, so you can average it as a while loading controls to lower the pro error probability. But same thing, introducing another housekeeping protein, you still need to validate it. And, use, and additionally, you cut your block into more pieces. And, the, and thirdly, you might need to thoroughly characterize your housekeeping protein before experiment and also spike gain equal amount of standard protein into each sample. The first, uh, the, these four alternatives, I'll say, requires more, I'll say, uh, optimization processes. And also, it takes a lot of time because of the optimization and trying and errors. And then if one fail, you have to pick another. So it's not so cost effective and time efficient. Therefore, researchers have been opting for a much more easier way and better way to, to become the new loading control in quantitative wise and blood, which is visualizing the total protein. Because since one band is easily affected by all these factors, why not we just look at the entire protein profile of the sample? There are a few steps that we need to look into, like when we should visualize the total protein. Before transfer, there will be omitting the transfer efficiency factor. If you do it in the different uh, par gel or parallel gel, this also may not be truly represent what happened in the loading. And therefore, the final alternative that has emerged to be the most convenient way to solve the drawbacks will be visualizing the transfer total protein on the blot. I also want to quote uh, here, total protein will be the new normal. For quantitative western blot. There are a few, a lot of publications nowadays has been promoting and telling the importance of total protein serving as a normalization control because the staining the, the total protein represents the actual loading amount more accurately than the housekeeping proteins due to minor technical and biological variations. Plus, it solves the issue of housekeeping protein that commonly fail to show loading differences above very small loading amounts, 0 0.5 to 10 microgram. So all you know, you want to see the correlation, a uh, direct and linear, uh, direct correlation and signal linearity between the signal of the total protein stain and your protein loading. So uh, protein load, so it serves as a very good loading control for the entire Western blood protocol. Hello. Yeah, can you, can you hear my voice? Okay, great. If you look at the publication requirement nowadays, we can see in the in terms of Journal of Biological Chemistry, they do state that, let me zoom it here, they prefer signal intensities are normalized to total protein by staining the entire membrane unless there's a clear demonstration that the expressions of the housekeeping proteins is unaffected by the experimental treatment. You can look in details that the, the, in the collecting and presenting data that under their journal, they will, they will say, try to normalize the signal intensity for, with, for to total protein staining or loading whenever, whenever possible, unless you can prove your housekeeping protein is indeed housekeeping. With it, with that, let me let us look at total protein normalization. Okay, so with total protein normalization, instead of trying to find a protein that can represent the total uh, amount of the sample that transfer on the membrane and everything, we're looking at the entire uh, prof uh, profile of the protein in that particular sample. So the total protein is measured on the membrane directly, and this value will be used as the denominator. Total protein normalization or total protein has wider uh, dynamic range because it allows detection of both low abundance ta target protein or your pro any other proteins with highly expressed housekeeping proteins altogether with lesser risk of oversaturation. 
This has smaller, therefore uh, minimizing the membrane saturation error. Total protein normalization, normalization has lower variability. It has smaller technical and biological variations because it avoids lane to lane variation inherent in the whole Western plotting techniques. It has smaller biological variation as well because since the entire protein population of the sample uh, will, be, will be visualized, and this entire population is actually less susceptible to a change than a single housekeeping protein. Of course, it's uh, minimal changes with experimental condition, shorter time taken, uh, since you don't need to strip and reprobe in chemiluminescent western. And it serves as a very good QC step to use to monitor your protein transfer efficiency. And all in all, it's uh, just the matter of a lot of protein, uh, how total protein stain versus one single protein uh, in as a total pro uh, housekeeping protein serving as a normalization control. So the, the benefit is uh, very clear over here. So many versus one. So it's as simple as that. In the context of total protein normalization, you also need to ensure that the staining protocol that you use is compatible with your antibody binding and detection method. So you can achieve the you, you, don't, you are not risking or jeopardizing your Western blot uh, data by the end of the day. With that, the new normal quantitative Western blot image you will see in the coming years or even starting these two years will be fluorescent detection of the uh, fluorescent Western blot with total protein stain. The next will be fluorescent Western blot with housekeeping normalization, provided that you proved the housekeeping protein is unaffected by the experimental condition and treatments. And finally, will be chemiluminescent detection with total protein stain. So if you know, understand the benefits of total protein normalization, and you want to move on transit to the, this uh, normalization control, so where should you start? So the first thing you need to do is you need to choose a suitable total protein stain. So there are a lot of uh, types of total protein stains available for you on the market that you can choose, but it will affect the complexity of the workflow. So there are a few cons important considerations when you choose your own total protein stain. Of course, the first thing is dynamic range, detection limit, the visualization method that's suitable for your lab, that the, your lab have, and staining time, visualization time, consistency across tissues and experimental condition, and also compatibility with your antibody-based detection. So for the simplest total protein normalization workflow, we actually recommend do using fluorescent stain that will enable simultaneous detection of the total protein stain and also your target proteins, although this will require a fluorescent detector with two or more channels. And though you so don't be worried, some of the total protein stain do compatible with gamiluminescent detection as well. So let us look at some of the total protein stains available on the market or on, in your lab at the moment. So we're looking at this uh, paper from Maurice that published back in 2017, how to head towards total protein staining at the in the terms of a quantitative Western blot. So we have a lot of them. We have Ponsu S, we have Cypro Ruby, Comessi, Amido Black, Stain-Free Technic, and Epicoconone. The two reagents we have in Azuba system will be Total Stain Q and Azuret, both of them targeting different types of samples and different dynamic range or optimal range of protein loading. So you can see here, Total, Pro Total Stain Q is uh, best for one, I'll say one to 50 microgram lysate per lane, and it's the best for cell lysate. And you have, if you have any uh, biological fluid, let's say urine and so on and so forth, we recommend you go for Azuret itself because it works in a lower protein concentration. I highly recommend you to go check this paper out. So in, in the paper, it does state a little bit about the limitations and why some of these may not be a uh, uh, help, uh, the better it might not be the optimal total protein stain to achieve quantitative Western blot. And each of them have their own limitations and, and including compatibility issues. 
So here, let me introduce the total protein states we have in our, in our portfolio. So we have two fluorescent reagents for total protein normalization. These stains, uh, staining reagents are designed for quantitative pattern plot in mind. So therefore, we choose it to be fluorescent stain. So we have total stain Q that is meant for post, both them meant for post transfer staining. And total stain Q, we have a uh, stain kits for PVDA membrane and nitrocellulose membrane. That is best if you work with a cell, a cell lysate sample. And we also have a ZURED, which works for biological fluid uh, at a much more sensitive range as a lower concentration of protein concentration. And this can stain post transfer blood and gel as well. And in the purpose of qualitative confirmation of your transfer efficiency, we recommend you to do PONSU-S staining, uh, PONSU staining to check uh, your, your gel or your blood. Sorry, your blood. Right, let us look at total stain Q. So as mentioned before, how skin protein, it has, uh, I'll say the, the drop, one of the drawback is the narrow uh, dynamic range and linearity and at high protein loads. So total stain Q, here is here to solve the issue of that, the lacking the linearity and normalization accuracy at high protein loads. So therefore it's a quantitative and rapid fluorescent reagent for total protein normalization for Western blot. It's linear, okay? The best, uh, the best load, I'll say optimal range of it will be one to 50 microgram per lane. So the, the, the maximum that we tested before will be 50 microgram. And then it's versatile, it's compatible with your chemi and fluorescent western blot, both PVDF and nitrocellulose membrane. And also it can image with any CCD-based imaging system or scanner that is having green channel or safe dye channel. It's convenient. The whole staining protocol will be 20 minutes. There's no de-staining step required. It is, it is reversible as well because there's no covalent bond binding to the protein. And therefore, there's no residual signals to happen in the detection channels. For example, your chemi, or chemi luminescent or fluorescent channels. It is environmental friendly. The kits or regions are basically stored at room temperature, all biodegradable. You can pour them down the drain and contains no heavy metal for increased safety and simple disposal. So I say total sink use works uh, work best for cell lysate. It's convenient. It's a post transfer staining. 20 minutes long, what you do is after you transfer uh, the, the protein to the blood, then you can carry on with the entire uh, total stain queue uh, staining, and then you can proceed with your blocking and primary and secondary antibodies incubation and detection. You can do the detection by the end of the entire protocol, or you can do the detection right after you stain with the total protein stain. So it's up to you. So this staining itself, you can look at the dye excitation emission wavelength. It's using green channel, side three channel, or safe dye channel for, to excite it. So it might require your system to be able to do such a fluorescent detection. And signal linearity wise, the like I say, the best. Uh, protein loads that we have tested so far, or the optimal range is one to 50, uh, is very is linear. So this is one to highlight is all these proto protein stains on the market, you need to look at their signal linearity and the optimal range. Make sure that your protein load works within the range. Therefore, you, you can achieve that uh, signal linearity, then you uh, whatever you get is whatever you should be having in the protein uh, on the plot. Okay, so you can see we have tested in-house. It has a HALA cell lysate diversion series from a very small concentration like 0 0.625 up to 50 microgram. You can, you can see why we have determined the optimal range is between 1 to 50 microgram per lane. So you can, uh, guess due to the signal linearity and correlation itself. The limitation of detection will be 20 nanogram. But as I said, we do not recommend anyone to push the limit of the reagent because everything has been tested before and optimized for that particular uh, load. The ideal sample for total thank you would be cell lysate because cell lysate has a higher a protein a concentration. Versatility wise, Total stain Q is compatible with chemi luminescent western. So if you are not doing fluorescent western at the moment, so do not worry. You can still utilize this, utilize the total stain Q 
to be to do total protein normalization. So here we have our in-house uh, data showing there's a uh, HeLa cell lysate at every uh, five microgram replicate. So this is a total stain Q image at the green channel, and you have your ECL detection in your chemiluminescent vessel plot. So do understand that the ECL signal do not affected. It's not affected by the total stain Q fluorescence uh, signals at all. The stain also the staining also compatible with fluorescent western blood. You can see over here there's no residual total pro, uh, total protein signals at your let's say a near infrared or fluorescent channels. So this is very important because you want the total protein stain to be not interfering with the day inter, uh, the detection of your target proteins because by the end of the day that is what you want to quantify. The next total protein stain I want to uh, mention is uh, azure red. Azure itself is a different approach. It's an epicoconone based stain. So it's a small and naturally occurring fluorescent compound that reversely binding to lysine, arginine, and histine residual in the protein and peptides. And it yields an intensively, uh, intensely red fluorescence product. So therefore, it's a sensitive fluorescent reagent for rapid total protein stain in membranes and gel. So it is very sensitive. It can detect less than a nanogram protein per spot in gel and also on the plot with lower background and no speckling. The whole staining and washing protocol uh, will be 30 minutes for, for blot and what, three hours for gel. It's versatile, compatible with both chemi and fluorescence, uh, Western blot, PVDF, nitrocellulose membrane and gel, and also any CCD imaging system or scanner that comes with UV light and also green fluorescent channel. The staining itself is reversible, but it's not required for Western blot, and it's environmental friendly as well. You can pour it down the drain. So for membranes, since it's meant for those very low protein load, so for example, urine and cerebral spinal fluid, therefore we also have a researcher who've been using this for protein arrays. And also if you want to use it for higher protein loads, you might need to optimize your protocol. And for protein gel staining, it serves as a good alternative to replace Cypro Ruby because the, uh, the staining protocol is much shorter, it's uh, three hours long. And also we have more uh, other uh, benefits as well, like uh, lesser, uh, lesser speckling, uh, high signal to background, and also stable to photo bleaching. So it is a 30 minutes post transfer staining in a, when you're using a zoo red total protein stain. And as a, it fits easily into your Western plot protocol. So it's a post transfer staining right after your you transfer, you've got your plot, then you can stain with a zoo red. The excitation itself, the detection itself will be, you be you can use two types of channel, UV channel or green channel excitation. So Azure itself is also compatible with chemiluminescence and also fluorescent western blot and also in the 2D gel. So this is what we say that the concentrated urine, uh, this is a sample that we get from our uh, user. Ponsu S on the other hand, it's a sensitive color, uh, colored region for transfer efficiency verification. It's quick, reversible, and it's compatible or, uh, to PVDM nitrocellulose membrane. It is, uh, but do remember that it's not designed in the mind of uh, normalized total protein normalization, but it's very good in identifying technical artifacts, like uneven, bubbling, uh, uneven transfer or bubbly, bubbles in your gel. So when do we use uh, the total stain Q and azure red? There's a comparison with it. So total stain Q will be, we work at a higher protein uh, loading range, one to 50 microgram per lane. So it works best for cell lysate. Azure red on the other hand, because it works at a lower, a lower protein concentration, 0 0.1 to one microgram per lane. So it works best for biological fluid with low protein concentration. So we have tested this everything in house. Therefore, we determine the optimal range for all uh, for these two total protein stains. The differences between them will be here: the application. Both of them can stain uh, membranes, nitrocellulose and PVDF membranes, and the both of them works with fluorescent and chemiluminescent western. But azure works with protein array and also gel. 
Cell like uh, total thing is best to stain a uh, cell like seed, total protein. Azure is best for biological fluid with pro and also protein arrays. The dynamic range, because uh, due to the dynamic range that we have determined and uh, and uh, how to say tested for these samples. And the staining time, as I mentioned before, 20 minutes for total stain queue and 30 minutes for Azure. Right. So on the market, there are a lot more total protein stains available for you. If you realize it, they are mostly fluorescent uh, stain, total protein stain, because the fluorescent in mind is actually much more accurate in uh, than other kind of signal is a static light generation. Therefore, if you look at those reagents that design in the uh, total protein normalization in mind, they are mostly fluorescent uh, staining. So here I want to summarize, there are some, some uh, total protein stain options on the market. We have two, Azure and Total Stain Q from Azuba system. We have stain-free, side dye, and also revert. So you can look at the differences in terms of the labeling step. Like I said, the, for quantitative Western plot, you want to be able to uh, control whatever possible happen in the entire Western plot protocol. So we do recommend two post-transfer labeling. The excitation channel will be basically depending on what kind of imaging system you have in your lab. And uh, some of them may require UV for, uh, for labeling or for fixing and everything. So these are some that you need to look for. Binding type also, there are different types of binding types, uh, no chemical bond or no chemical bond uh, or binding affinity. So both of them will affect whether the stain is reversible or not. And I'll say the most important thing for you to choose your total protein stain is the optimal protein load that fits into your protocol. For example, like total stain Q will be works with protein load one to 50 and some other works with more than 50, more than five, or more than 10 and so on and so forth. Okay, so you need to look at what you're doing at the moment in your Western blot, then you choose your total protein stains that is uh, work with that range. We do, like I said, we highly recommend pulse transfer labeling and then uh, reversible blinding because we you do not know whether some, some of the researcher may be using the staining to do, let's say, changing the gel and do the subsequent um, how say, analysis on mass spec and whatever. So we do want to minimize the interference between the stain, the dye on the protein as much as possible. With that, let us move on to publication application notes. So how to put your data in uh, the total protein Western plot data in the scientific paper. It's very easy. Just how you show your total, uh, your housekeeping protein, like actin in the paper. Now you just show total protein stain. You can just crop the band pattern at a, at a certain, uh, at, a, at a fixed, let's say uh, molecular weight. Therefore you show the protein patterns there. So, or the more, I think some of them or most of them right now will be putting the, the total protein stain uh, whole blood image in the supplementary data. So you can see over here. Uh, this is a uh, azure red data. And we have also have a uh, data from total stain queue. Okay, so uh, this is, you can look at, they actually put the data in supplementary. Okay, same thing works for uh, the other, they, they just, uh, the red showcase is uh, staining on the blot and the gel itself. And also, uh, these you can look at the band patterns as compared to their target proteins over here. You can see how consistent the staining it is. In application note, we have accurate uh, Western blot normalization with azure red fluorescent protein stain. Here we compare the total protein uh, stain with azure red versus the housekeeping proteins that we are, we are familiar with, like tubulin, beta-actin, and GAP-DH. So this lysate concentration is 2 to 12 microgram per lane. And can, when, you, when we plot the signal's uh, intensity versus the protein load, you can see even though the housekeeping protein, their r square values, the correlations, uh, I'll say they are quite good, but they are not as good as total protein stains, as you can see here. And this is when we work in the lower range of the uh, lysate concentration or the protein load. And the differences or the R correlation will, I'll say, will change, will reduce greatly when you increase the protein load. So in all in all, we do promote or we highly recommend you to move into total protein stain whenever possible. Because if you start to notice that your house chemical proteins 
let's say between samples or even between uh, biological samples are not constant anymore, it's time for you to move to total protein stains. Because you, you, under, you would know that that one single housekeeping protein bands is not longer good as a loading control in the end for the entire quantitative Western plot. So let us recap what I've talked about in this presentation. I will talk about why housekeeping proteins, uh, I'll say the drawbacks and it, and people start to opt for total protein normalization. And there's a lot of publication right now actually do promote this and they do not actually question it. And or in at the base, when you do your own experiment, you might be actually having this doubt that whether why my data is not consistent. It might be because your housing proteins are not consistent at all. So you might need to look into this. And if you found this issue, I will highly recommend you to transit to total protein normalization. And in terms of choosing the total protein stains, you need to check the compatibility of the stain and also works. It has the optimal range that works within with your Western blot protocol, like whatever a protein loads that you usually loaded in your Western blot, that is quite important. And make sure that even the total protein stain signals falls within the signal linearity, same as the rest of the Western blot as a detection method. Okay, you need to make sure the signal linearity is there. And finally, publication is very easy. Most of them, they just, uh, for total protein normalization, staining or staining images, they just put it in the supplementary data. There's no need to display it as a representative data in the manuscript at all. So all in all, we have all, we have brochures available on our website, or you can approach, uh, you can approach our host today, Atlantis Biosciences. The on total protein stains available in Azuba system. We also have a checklist and ultimate guide to quantitative Western blot. Two total, I'll say two fluorescent total protein stains available in our house. Total stain Q, but for cell lysate and azure for lower uh, lower concentration protein lysate. And we also have samples available for you. Here, so you can request them for Atlantis Biosciences. So they can send some to you. You can try it out on your chemi Western blot or fluorescent Western blot just to see whether it solves your doubts or not. So we, we welcome you to try it and then feedback to us and uh, let us know what you like about it or and what you dislike about it so we can improve for that. And part of for that, apart from that, uh, Zuba system, we have a whole, we have a huge range of product lines of uh, covering basically accessories of Western blot and also reagents. We're plotting accessories, trains and everything, and membrane total protein detection, membrane blocking even, both for chemi and fluorescent Western blot, wash buffer, and uh, reagents band for chemi luminescent detection and also fluorescent detection as well. So I want to put out two regions for you to introduce to you. We have specialized chemiluminescent HRP substrate for CCD imaging. We call it radiant substrate. So there are three range of only. The first thing is ECL. This is the basic one meant for your housekeeping protein. Okay, it's economical, it's linear, okay, for quantitative Western. And if you want higher linear dynamic range, increased sensitivity or extended the signal longevity up to 60 minutes, or even two hours, we have Radiance Q. And we also have the Radiance Plus that is ultra high sensitive and with low, way lower background uh, than others. And the stain that we have tested so far is eight hours. You still can see the, the, the chemi signals. So all of these, uh, I'll say reagents is uh, stored in room temperature condition. So you don't need to keep it in the fridge. We also have Azure Spectra fluorescent secondary antibodies that's uh, meant for visible and near infrared fluorescent, uh, fluorescent Western blot because we also promoting or highly promote uh, fluorescent Western blot right now because it's much more accurate, it's quantitative as compared to chemiluminescent, which is semi quantitative in that sense. And you can see we have five, uh, I'll say five channels available for you. And then if you're doing four plex Western blot, fluorescent Western blot, you can see how the pairings goes. We have three, all of them will be fluorescently labeled and three combinations of the primary and secondary and one, we have also directly, we also have labeling kit to label your primary antibody as well. So here's just a showcase to you. Uh, there's a, a variety of hosts 
available for these secondary antibodies. So you do not worry that the cross-reactivity between these secondary antibodies. 